Jeff Baker here with Seabreeze Computers. I'm going to show you quickly but in detail how to test a laptop power adapter and a laptop power connector uh, to see if they're working. So we have a, a laptop that doesn't turn on and we want to know is it the connection in the laptop or is it the power adapter to the laptop. So first of all we have the power adapter to the laptop, looks like this, and it's a Toshiba laptop, Toshiba power adapter, and the first thing we want to look at is the output. It's 19 volts, we have a little symbol there with a line and three dashes under it which means it's direct current, and then 3.95 amps. So we want to make sure that the end of this adapter when it's plugged in to the wall that this end is having 19 volts or around there and not fluctuating up and down greatly. First of all, if you have a little cheap analog meter like this one and you hook it to the power adapter and you can't get, no matter what setting you put it to, you can't figure out how to get this needle to move, it barely moves at all, and throw this adapter out. These little cheap adapters, about $15, $20, aren't powerful enough to test laptop power cords. So we throw this one away. Many people will tell you to go out and buy a fluke multimeter to, um, or voltmeter to test the power adapter of a laptop. But a fluke multimeter is very good, but very expensive. They can be anywhere from $100 to $400 online to buy. So you can go out and buy. All you need is this multimeter by Klein Tools. This one is the MM200. It's about $50. You can get it at the Home Depot or about $36. You can order it from Amazon. So you get this multimeter from Klein Tools and the first thing we're going to do is plug in the negative wire and the positive wire. The negative wire is the one with the black connection and it's going to go always in this center port labeled COM and COM stands for common so the black one always goes there. The red connection is going to plug in to the one to the right that has a V on it and an ohm symbol and a temp symbol and we're always for this kind of test going to plug the red one or the positive lead into that port there with the V on it. Next we're going to look at the dials here. We know that we're testing um, voltage and it's direct current voltage and if you look at the very first setting above off there is a V and before that there's a line with a little wavy line under it that looks like a tilde. That tilde or wavy line stands for AC or alternate current connection. So that's what we're going to be not using for our test actually. But the line above it shows that it's direct current. So we're going to be testing direct current but this setting on this adapter has the same setting to be able to test AC or DC, direct current or alternate current. Now on a fluke meter, there's three different settings that have a V or for doing volt testing. And so the one you're going to want to use on the fluke meter is not the one with the wavy line or the alternate current, but you're going to want to use the V with the, the straight line for direct current and the three uh, dashes under that line. So now we test our power adapter by first plugging it in to the wall, to a power outlet, and you have your other end leads, uh, negative and positive. First we want to, on the multimeter, take off these uh, plastic caps. They're not used in the testing, they're just protective caps. So we take them off is we take the positive or the red one and stick it into the middle 
of the power adapter and we take the black one or the negative one and we're going to touch it to the outside of the power adapter. So we turn our multimeter, voltmeter to the volt setting which can measure direct current and positive current and then we take this and we touch it and what we're looking for is 19 volts. So there we go. 19.51 fluctuates a little bit and then it stays current on that. So we know now there's nothing wrong with the power adapter. It's staying very steady at the correct setting. So the next test is with our laptop. As you can see here, I've already taken apart the laptop to test the power connector which is on this side and there's been parts broken. This uh, power connection is uh, the plastic on it has been broken. There's little plastic pieces uh, left behind. So now what we want to do to test it, I won't show you how to take apart the laptop because there's many websites online how to take apart different laptops. You just look it up how to take apart and then type in the the make and model of the laptop. We need to disconnect from the motherboard the power connection. So we take that off and we have the little connection there. And then we're going to connect our power adapter into this connection to see if we're getting power. It seems like it's nice and stable. So let's see if it's the power connector if we need to replace that. So we're going to take our multimeter leads and if we follow the trail up of the wires here we see that we have uh, a red wire and a black wire. So what we want to do is to the very end of the connection, the metal there, we want to touch the red wire and then we want to touch the black end to the black wire to the metal there. And then we turn on our, our multimeter and look at that. And what we see is very strange numbers. So if you're if you're getting a little M on the voltmeter display down there in the corner, then that means millivolts, little M next to the V. That means one thousandth of a volt. So that means we're not even getting one volt, even though it says 102. That M, little M has to disappear before we're getting one volt on the meter. So that the fluctuation and the little M shows that the power connection is really bad. So we get a new power connection, which I've ordered here. This one for this Toshiba laptop uh, costs about $10, $15 on Amazon. And what you do then to test it is the same way. You take uh, your power cord, make sure, plug it into the wall, plug it in uh, to the power connection here, and then we take the same little connection here and we want to touch the red part of our multimeter to the red lead and then we want to touch one of the black cords to the black lead and see what we get. And at first I was kind of moving around a bit so I wasn't getting the correct voltage but I was getting a lot of volts and now that I'm pretty steady and, and connecting right on the metal pieces I'm getting exactly 19.51 volts. Exactly what I was getting when I was testing the end of the power adapter by itself. So we know that this new power connection is good and the old one was bad. So what we're going to do is replace the power connector. So we got to take the old one out. Pretty simple, it's unplugged and put the new one in. It goes into the same same place on the motherboard.
Mm. Now for the part we've all been waiting for, we got the power, the new power connector into the laptop. Does the laptop turn on? We don't want to put the whole laptop back together before we know if it uh, turns on. You know, it's not for the uh, faint of heart to take apart and put together a laptop because you have literally about 30 to 50 screws, all these parts that you got to take out. So in order for a laptop to turn on, you have to have at least one of the memory sticks in the laptop. So we have that in the bottom. You want to be careful. You don't want any metal around it. You don't want any static electricity. So here we go. We plug in the power adapter. Make sure we don't touch anything metal. Ah, look, we have something good already. The green light is showing on the motherboard, which didn't show before with the old power connector. So that's a good sign. So I'm probably not going to turn the laptop on because I know it's going to work, but I can on this little circuit board. I know that the left button here is the power button. So maybe I will turn it on. Let's see what happens. It's powering up. Got another light down here on the motherboard on the front of the computer. Toshiba on the screen. So it worked. We've done it. Now we got to put the laptop back together. You can find instructions online on how to take these apart. So you just got to reverse the instructions. You got to make sure we turn it off. Got to make sure we unplug the power adapter. We don't want to take the memory out. All right, here we go. We're going to put it back together 